Welcome to our episode of Visite today, and thank you very much for being here again. I want to get started right away with a mother who wrote to me. And it's so nice, because she writes her daughter doesn't dare, and that's why she wants to do it for her. And I'll read to you what she wrote to me. My daughter works in home healthcare services. During the past two years, the emergency doctor has repeatedly picked her up and admitted her to the hospital because she has such unbearable sudden pain in the area of the lungs. Cardiac arrhythmias, shortness of breath, can barely breathe and has difficulty walking up the stairs. And because of that constant worry, she is now very desperate as a mother too, because the worst can always be ruled out. And it is probably true, a so-called pulmonary embolism, for example, or a heart attack. I think those are fears that one can have. But the daughter doesn't get any further. There is always this situation, and I can imagine that she already suffers a lot from it or is certainly also afraid, whether it suddenly occurs again. She then also describes that at the moment, she is of course burdened by wearing the mask and that they measured her vitamin D levels and that was pretty low. But this vitamin D level was then supported. And today it is between 70 and 90 nanograms per milliliter. They also added the blood results to me at the back and are now asking for an answer. Or what I think about it. First of all, such pain attacks only occur when the compensation of the body is simply overwhelmed. And first thing I think about is what you, as a young woman, live through every day. A medical consultation should never be shorter than 30 to 45 minutes so that one can understand why you keep having this acute pain here. And it is also in an area that is in the chest area. We don't want to underestimate what happens in the chest area, as that is the place of the heart, the lungs. So it is quite frightening. If we had this re recurring pain in the back area, deeper down the spine, then we would, of course, be handicapped while walking, running. But maybe we wouldn't be so terrified. You are in a home healthcare service. I don't know if you are in a big city or in the countryside. If you were in a big city, you would have a double burden. One is you have to search and find a parking space every time. The other is you're under immense pressure. Healthcare services today on an outpatient basis, and of course I've had a lot of experience for 20 years because I've had close contact with the home care service, I know how you live and, I, and how you have to work and how you are pressed for time. I don't know your personal environment, to what extent life creates a balance for you there, or to what extent you are left alone with many things in life. All of this is incredibly important if you want to guess where the focus is here. But the fact is one thing, life is stress and life is strain. And in the context of stress and strain, your body must react accordingly. And it does this because of course it wants to support you. To cope with these tasks in life. But only limited things in us happen with consciousness. And the biggest things actually always happen in the subconscious. 
And consciousness is actually the realm of conscious emotions. That means that I am strong, so I want this and I feel that. Whether I react perfectly, that's me and I want that. If I am obsessive, I can accept that that's me. I understand that I am caught in this obsession. If I am very conscientious and want to do everything right on the clock, if I am 100% committed, that is something that I then also make up with my personality. Or if I am someone who worries all the time, and 24 hours actually not only worrying about the own life, but maybe also that of the mother, or the father, or the best friend. Maybe also worries about not keeping the job and so on. That is consciousness, but the other is the subconscious or the unconscious. And that's 90% of what it actually looks like in my body. And subconscious actually means the realm of hidden emotions. It's like the iceberg that sticks a bit out on the top But actually, the dimension of what the body has also experienced in the unconscious, what it went through emotionally, if it lives a certain worry and a certain anger and tension resonate again and again, when it can't explain itself otherwise in its behaviour pattern. For example, if it is very self-centred, or you live with a partner who is very self-centred. Then it constantly releases a feeling in the other subconscious, whether it is alienation or not understanding, or tension. With that, I just want to say that our subconscious and every sensation and every feeling and every experience lived through provide a memory, a reminder for something that is also fixed in our body in every cell. You should never underestimate that these things contribute significantly to our body is able to change. In this tension or in this situation, you react to life in your own unique way. And now you have to go back and understand the human anatomy. And that was the thought I got when I read your mother's worried words. These are actually attacks that occur. Insane attacks of pain. And actually, the lever of where disease is placed is, how should I say, collected in our limbic system or the limbic system is our feeling brain and the limbic system is linked to our autonomic nervous system but our autonomic nervous system controls us our autonomic nervous system always ensures a certain tension or relaxation is channeling our energy to where we need it. It always works mirroring life. And if you live in constant tension, then attention is also transferred to the body, a muscular tension. And I would like to recommend a book to you, written by John Sarno. It's called Relieved from Back Pain. This colleague explained very well in the book what happens when we humans lose this inner peace, when we are no longer balanced, when we can no longer find our way back into this relaxation, so when tension builds up again and again, which one can also tolerate only to a limited extent. And he explained exactly which level of the spine is triggered by which conflict and becomes tense. 
you have to imagine that our brain and the spine and the spinal cord naturally merge into one another. The elongated brain is the spinal cord and the spinal cord runs through the entire spine down to the tailbone and a nerve emerges from each vertebral body on the right and left. This nerve gives impulses, too much, too little, hormones, heart rate, bowel activity, kidney activity, active, stop everything. The immune performance is activated or throttled as a signal via this system. The insulin production is controlled via this cascade, conveying the information to the pancreas, for example. And to understand it better, I would like to give you an example. There is a mother who has three children and these children are grown up. But this mother can't let go. That means she is constantly with her thoughts with the children. And as soon as something happens to the children, she is there with a heart full of joy or with a feeling of worry. There are some things that children shouldn't tell her because the, murray, the mother worries about them for days and for the children this is quickly forgotten. But this worry triggers something in the mother and then she constantly has the feeling of tension and her heart hurts. It's like angina pectoris, the heart spasms. It's the children's worries. It's not her worries. The children know how to solve them well, but the mother keeps having heart pain as soon as a negative emotion comes along and the husband drives her to the hospital all the time because she's being examined over and over for not only arrhythmia, but for this angina pectoris. And the result is always, no, everything is fine with the heart. But right there, and he describes it so wonderfully, right there at this point where the nerve exit is that leads to the heart through the tension of the muscles and that is the point where the heart is supplied that is the exit in the TH4 area so the thora thoracic vertebrae bra which allows this nerve to emerge which now has to go through a musculature which insanely compresses this nerve that can only carry over to where the end of that nerve is, and that is the heart. This means that this tension of the heart now reacts or reactivizes as pain. And when I look over this woman as a patient and looked after her as a general practitioner, I, of course, very quickly registered and questioned what happened now. And she answered me, and every time it was always an event in that case. For you, it may not be the events. It is life that brings you into this tension again and again. And depending on which floor it takes place in the context of my spine, which is held and carried by a massive, compact, coexistence of muscles. The tension or relaxation of the muscles is crucial to the pressure on these nerves. And if you are interested in the Dawn method, there is a very nice poster where you can see exactly what psychological conflict in us creates tension on the other hand. and thus also in which organ for which symptoms. This is also the case when there is tension up here and the atlas, so this, the first cervical vertebrae, the pulling nerve that leads back to the head and an absolutely strong tension occurs there. You can get insane right-sided migraines up to failure symptoms, up to right-sided migraines. Headache, dizziness, imbalance. So on any level of your spine, 
we can assign which conflict is causing a dysfunction now in the corresponding organ. This is how you can understand stomach pain, cardiac arrhythmias. You can always trigger bladder infections because the supply of the corresponding organ or the lack of nervous supply has an impact on the organ and its health and our entire life takes place between tension and relaxation. What happens in the tension? If the muscle tenses in the tension, then the capillaries that pull through this muscle and supply the muscle cell are throttled. But what is happening? Now we have a hypoxia and a hypoxia is when the muscle cell receives too little oxygen. At the moment, when it is getting too little oxygen, it has to take a different metabolic path to provide energy. And that means that the muscle cell switches off the production of left spinning lactic acid. This is what you would also feel, for example, if you suddenly did too much exercise and get into a metabolism that now has to get by without oxygen then you have sore muscles. It happens unconsciously. And when the tension gets so great and the hypoxia gets bigger, then left spinning lactic acid is produced. And this left spinning lactic acid now creates a different milieu. And now there is inflammation. The body slows you down. It slows you down insanely. And at that moment, you just have to stop and hold still and take the pressure off. And maybe this distracts you from all this life, which puts you under great pressure every day. I highly recommend this book to you. For example, this colleague recommended to not continue physiotherapeutic work is for patients at this intensity, but school of life or educational work and he took patients along on the way to understand themselves, to take themselves into their own hands and to try to change something at that point in life. This back pain is very typical when the burden of life, for example, becomes greater and greater, when you can no longer bear the debts, when you are left alone with the children as a mother or father, when all these things are like tension on both shoulders and you have constant shoulder and neck problems. Or, for example, on the back areas L4, L5. He says, I read this book in 1993 that 80%, 90% of all back pain have been triggered muscularly. And I can really underline that today, after 20 years, because back pain is a very big topic. And to get on with your cause here, contact someone who will help you with this. Who may also offer the DORM method. Who also offers Myoflex therapy because myo is the muscle, reflex are the nerves that run through the muscle, and therapy means they work via trigger points. And this trigger point work is incredibly painful. But at the moment when they get right to that point and you want to go to hell, the brain experiences a circuit which in turn gives the muscle a new signal in the back reflection. You can relax here. And this relaxation is very important. So that's what run through this muscle also loses its compression again. This is a great work that is now in your hands. 
maybe to look at life again from another perspective calmly and say, at which point do I turn in a circle, stand in my way, or what needs to change? Maybe there will be a lot more than I can only interpret here now. But make sure that the muscles come back into good regulation and relaxation. And that's not only done through exercise or something, but first of all, through the work on yourself. Of course, every muscle also has an increased tendency to cramp. When there is too much calcium. That said, here too, please make sure to take a look at your calcium. Because calcium is something that is responsible for muscle contractions. And the depletion of calcium and the better metabolic economy of calcium makes calcium fluorine atom, for example, or bio Schlüssel number one. I would recommend that you take 10 tablets in the morning and 10 tablets in the evening in a cup or glass of water. Stir well with warm water and drink. Calcium's antagonist is magnesium. And magnesium in this form, like 600 to 900 milligrams of magnesium citrate, take it to resolve, to relieve, to relax. And above all, a lot of warmth in back. Breathe healthily. You won't believe how incredibly valuable it is to breathe. And that was very interesting. I had just read this book. I think it was about four or five weeks after that. I was sitting at my desk in my practice and I got a phone call put through between two patients which pulled the rug away from under my feet. I was so shaken and so stunned that at that moment I felt like someone was pushing a dagger through the heart from front to back. I'm so grateful for this experience today and I think everyone else would have called the ambulance immediately because it was excruciating pain. But I knew the connection which I could give this call and then I just dealt with it myself first and tried to give myself a different relief to process this call. Also, but also to breathe. And whenever you breathe in very deeply and at the same time take your stomach out very strongly, hold your breath and consciously again and better even with the lip break Exhale much longer. In such a process, five, six, eight to ten times, slowly, consciously, all of your muscles begin to relax. I then practiced it that way, staying away from the waiting room through a side entrance, and told my nurses exactly where they need to give the neural procaine injection, paravertebrally in the back. And then I noticed how the whole process slowly dissolved. And after 20 minutes, it was all done. But I just want to tell you this as an example, because for my understanding, when I read this, it is somehow analogue to give so much magnesium for other things even during stress and suddenly no longer absorbing this flood of calcium creates these symptoms at this level. And I think it is always a great help when you learn from colleagues. That there is no heart attack, no pleural effusion and no pulmonary edema. This helps, but I saw the report from the hospital, including the results, and the colleagues have also mentioned it, 
For them, it is a muscular problem. And I think that's where it tends to be. And I can only recommend that you contact a colleague or a physiotherapist now who, pr- who practices the DORM method. Myor flex therapy, but maybe it is even more. Much more that now also needs help on a level which may never have been discussed. With this in mind, thank you very much for listening. And I am looking very forward to next Sunday. Goodbye. Dear viewers, the preceding episode is an indicator for a holistic medical approach and does not replace visiting your family doctor. Thank you.